Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode seven of Bedlam Crown TV. Happy to have you here. Uh, before we go any further, I want to say thank you to a few people. I've gotten some good new subscribers to my channel, as well as some people that left some good comments. So I just wanted to give a shout out to, I'm sorry if I slaughter any of these names, but Dominic Corbile, thank you for the support. Uh, Signosic, Signosic. Not sure how to say that one, but thank you for the comments and the subscribing to the channel. Also, the vinyl guys, my friend Bobby, uh, appreciate you. If you want to check out some other fun content, check out the vinyl guys. Uh, I'd like to thank Delia Thorha, I think is how you say it, um, for comments and subscribing. And then we got Toby C thirteen fifteen. Thank you. And bang your radio. Thank you. Thank you. And Gino Corona. Thank you guys and gals for all your comments and for subscribing to my channel. Appreciate you. It's been fun doing these. Uh, but like I said, this is episode seven. I've got a little something special I want to do for you right now. I ordered something and I thought it would be fun to open it together. Shall we? What have I got? Let's see. So I got my trusty scissors here. Safety first, kids. Be very careful. Open in the box, open in the box. And what do we have? We have some paper. We have some more paper. And we have some more paper. But we have something very special that I wanted to share with you. I'm not the best drummer in the world. I would even say I'm kind of a shitty drummer. But I enjoy playing the drums. I have my own set, as you can see here, part of it anyway. My friend E. Ray had to move back to his homeland of Turkey. He was the drummer for the band that I play with, with Bobby. And he had to go back. And so when he left as a parting gift, I gave him my signature Alex Van Halen sticks to take with him as a memento of playing with us here in the doom room. So, after I gave him those, I thought, well, I need to try some new sticks. So, what I have done is I have ordered <laughs> Danny Carey signature sticks from Tool. These aren't just any sticks. These are the sticks that Danny Carey likes to use when he plays live. And there's a kind of a cool feature on here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it very well, but right here. Wait, where are we on the camera? Right here. Kind of dips down all the way around on both sticks. Gives a little finger space. It's almost like a grip. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to try to play the drums with these. But I wanted you to see what I got. And they weren't even that expensive. They were only like, I think with tax and shipping costs and everything, I think it was only like 20 bucks. So I think it was well worth it. Pretty happy about that. Danny Carey from Two Little Signature Sticks. <laughs> Or to hit my keyboard with them. Anyway, so yeah, that's going to be nice to have. Add to the collection here in my music room. Uh, my friends and I call this the Doom Room. Not to be confused with the Doom Saloon that Clutch has, but we are the Doom Room. But anyway, today, special treat. Oh, by the way, if uh, you want a free hug, you're more than welcome. But it's got to be after the pandemic. Uh, just got to be safe, guys. <laughs> and gals. But today... I'm excited. We're going to be talking about a video, a Pantera cover that was released within the last day or so. Um, it's one of my favorite Pantera songs. It's Mouth for War. It's covered by Hailstorm, Code Orange, Baroness, and I want to say a couple more people. Maybe like the guy from, uh, oh shoot, Mutoid Man, maybe? We'll find out. I think it's going to tell us as we start to play this video, but I want to say that some of these ladies in this one, in this uh, video are kind of attractive, if I do say so myself. But anyway, so yeah, let's just jump right into this video and see what we got going on. This is a cover by very talented musicians, Mouth for War, and I'm really excited about this. For one reason, if not all the reasons, but Gina Gleason from Baroness, she is amazing on the guitar. She's attractive. She is a very talented musician. This is just going to be fun. So let's get right into this. Good 
Okay, air drum with my new sticks. Well, first of all, I gotta say this is on point. This sounds tight. They're playing it really, really well. Let's continue. This is amazing. I love how they're blending the male vocal voice with the female vocal voice. This is killer. And look how tight these, that is a sick bass. I like the pink with, is that purple on the end there? What's her shirt say? Candy Corpse. Ooh, she's kind of cute. Did you hear this? This is sick. Their instruments are using are amazing. They're playing it like super, super well. There's it's flawless. This is badass. You know, I want to make a point here, and not to be weird, but I hate it when people say, oh, like, female guitarist, or whatever. You don't ever hear someone say, well, male guitarist so-and-so, so why should we say female guitarist? As if it's an inferior thing. They're not. They're clearly shredding. They're ripping on their instruments. They're killing it with the vocals. So let's just call them all musicians and guitarists and drummers and bassists. Why do we have to separate by the sexes? You know what I'm saying? I've never, I've never understood that. So sick. They're about to go into the solo. Let's do this will be fun to see who goes into that. Gina Gleason, of course! I don't really want to interrupt the solo there, but did you hear the drum? They're doing these little tweaks. This is pretty good, guys. Are you ready?
We get right there and it's buffering again. What bullshit. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. This is so good though. I think we're almost back. I mean, it is what it is. You have to bear with me. But what killer musicians. This is so good. This is fun. It's talented. It's on point. They're playing one of my all time favorite songs, period. Just so happens this Pantera, who I love. By the way, I got to meet Dimebag one time. It was at the Starlight Bowl in San Diego, California. It was in the early 90s. I think Vulgar Display of Power had just recently come out. So this was probably like 91, 92, somewhere in there. And it was funny. He came off of his uh, tour bus. My buddy Robin and his brother and I were standing there waiting for him to come out. And he came out first. And uh, I was like, hey, Don, big fan. Pleasure to meet you. Something along those lines. He was like, yeah, hell yeah, man. And he like, pushed me up against the side of his tour bus. And then he signed my uh, ticket. I still have it somewhere. Phil and Soma came out. I got to meet him. Cool as shit. It was one of the highlights of my life getting to meet that guy. Both of them. But especially Dimebag, just because of the impact he's made, you know, with guitar. so much for watching if you enjoyed what you saw be sure to eat that subscribe button and get fat from all our delicious videos mm, dad rock also be sure to check out our patreon merch store tiktok everything imaginable by going to two minutes to late night.com with your support we've been able to pay over 250 artists to make videos with us and it keeps my dog happy we've got an exclusive podcast and other rewards you can only get by becoming a patreon patron so join today we also want to give a shout out to Donable Guitars for making the best riff sticks in the metal game right now. Look at this thing. It looks like a melted Pokemon. And finally, we want to give a shout out to Sound City and Fryette Amplification for giving us amplification. It's two minutes to late night. Guys, I wasn't really planning on watching till the very end like that, but I'm glad I did. Go ahead and support their Patreon and all that stuff. I don't have a Patreon. I'm not asking for any kind of money or donations or anything. I just do this for fun to hang out with you for a minute and to listen to some good music. But I thought that was killer. Gina Gleason, and Lizzie Hale and the other people that were playing, this was really fun, really good. I hope they do more of this kind of stuff in the future. It's kind of cool how even though the pandemic has made it so that live shows are temporarily on hold and that kind of stuff, you get people doing the live streams. You get other bands coming together, doing fun things like this. I know Mastodon did something with Les Claypool and a couple other people. And there's just so much good music out there, so many talented people. And I love how we're kind of in a day and era where things kind of cross-pollinate now. It's not just heavy metal fans only and hip-hop fans only and alternative and rock and jazz fusion and all these different genres. People are all coming together into this just big body of musicians, and I think it's really amazing. I love it. I thought this was really cool how at the end of the song, A Mouthful War, they didn't put it in the headline, or the, excuse me, not the headline, but the title, that they were going to go into domination at the end. So that was kind of fun. Um, so they, Mouth for War, they played a killer. I didn't hear a single off note. Nothing was wrong with it. It was badass. I'm going to watch this probably 35 more times tonight. This was so, so good. So thanks for stopping in, guys. Thanks again for all the people I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this episode for leaving your comments and checking me out and subscribing to my channel. Continue to do so. Feel free to leave your comments below. Um, tell me what you liked about this video, what you liked about the song, maybe what you didn't like about the song. Leave your comments below. Whatever you want to tell me, I will read those comments and perhaps you will even get a response. But thanks again for stopping in. Appreciate you. Okay, I'm checking out in my typical fashion. I'm going to stop the recording, and I'm going to get closer, and I'm going to get closer until you're just really uncomfortable, don't want to watch this anymore.